Right guys, in this video we're going to have a look at how we do uh, Pythagoras. So Pythagoras is used when you have a right angled triangle. So in my examples here you can tell they're right angled triangles because they have this little square here. So this is saying that this is a 90 degree angle, therefore right angle. And it's a way that we can find a missing length. So in this triangle here, I want to find this length. So I'm going to show you two different ways you can do this. Um, Pythagoras, what the actual theorem says is the sum, so if I add the area of this square and this square, so basically if I add the area of the two smaller squares, I get the area of the bigger square. So that's what I'm going to work out. It's this, if this length is 3, then the square would be 3 times 3, and that would be 9. So the area of this square would be 9. If I work out the area of this smaller square here, well, if that length is 4, 4 times 4 is 16. Okay, so the area of this one is 9, the area of this one is 16. And Pythagoras tells us that if I add these two together, I'll get the area of the bigger square. So 9 add 16 is 25. So the area of the bigger square is 25. So if you want to work out this missing length here, which I've called x, well, the area of the square is 25. To work out the length of the square, all you do is square root that, which will give you the answer of 5. And because that's in centimetres, it's 5 centimetres. OK, so that's one way to look at it. The other way is that people might have seen is the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the smaller sides here. So this side here and this side here. OK, so a and b would be the smaller sides. And all you would do is substitute in the values. So a squared and b squared are the smaller lengths. So I would have 3 squared plus 4 squared. And that would equal, in this case, the length is called x. So I'm going to say x squared. So then you just work it out, 3 squared, so 3 times 3 is 9, plus 4 squared, so 4 times 4 is 16, and again I'm going to keep that as x squared. Simplify this, so 25 equals x squared, and then to get rid of this squared, you would square root, so square root of 25, and then therefore... 5 equals x. So that's the other way you can look at doing Pythagoras. I'll do both ways for all the examples because um, I know some people have been taught different ways. Let's have a look at this one then. Exactly the same thing. This one here, this length here is 5, this length here is 6. So I'll do the first way first. Let's work out the area of this square. So 5 times 5 is 25. And 6 times 6, to work out the area of this square, is 36. OK. Now, when you add these together, so 25 plus 36, that's going to give you 61. And again, the area of this big square is 61. But I want the length of this side. So to do that, I square root the 61. And you probably need a calculator for that but you get the answer of 7.8. That's been rounded, OK? Again, if I was to do it the other way and use the formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Substituting the values for the smaller lengths, well, 5 and 6, so 5 squared plus 6 squared. And again, in this case, the length there is called x, so x squared. Fill it all in, 25 plus 36, which equals 61. Oh, sorry, I tell a lie. Let's keep that as x squared. Then let's put the 25 plus 36 is 61, which equals x squared. Then we can square root 61 to get x, which gives us the 7.8, which is the value of x, which is the value of that side. So two different ways you can do that, finding the longest length. So, you're probably wondering what happens when you want to find the smaller length. Well, let's have a look and do that together now. So, exactly the same thing. The area of this one 
and the area of this square and this square. So they're the smaller squares will equal the area of this one. But I don't know what the area of this one will be yet because that's my unknown. But we do know what these two are, so let's do that. So obviously 5 times 5 again is 25, so the area of that one is 25. And 13 times 13 is 169. So the area of that one is 25, and the area of that one is 169. So to work out the area of this one, I have to do the big one, the area of the big square, take away the area of the smaller square. So if I do that, 169, take away 25, leaves me with 144. And again, to find out that individual length, well, if the area of the square is 144, I square root that to get the answer of 12. That one's quite nice. Okay, so 12 centimetres. Let's try, the, uh, oh, sorry, let me go through and do it the other way. So obviously we've got the A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Well, I know the smaller length there is 5, so let's substitute that in. 5 squared plus, this time it's x, so let's say x squared, and that equals this length here, which is 13 squared. So again, substitute in, or simplify the value, so 5 squared is 25. Don't know what x squared is yet. Equals 169. A little bit of rearranging. Take away 25 from both sides. So that leaves you with the x squared equals 144. Square root both sides. x equals the square root of 144, which, as we just worked out, is 12. And again, centimetres. OK, so both ways there, you can do it. Either one would be absolutely fine. This one here, you're definitely going to need a calculator. Um, I've already done it on a previous bit of paper. So work out the area of this square and the area of this square. Well, 11 squared, or 11 times 11, is 121. And then 23.8, just to be a little bit tricky. So 23.8 times 23.8 is 566.44. So again, you definitely need a calculator to do that. I've already done it before. So if I want to work out the area of this smaller square here, I do this, the big area of the big square, take away the area of the smaller square. And if you do that, you're left with uh, 445.44. And again, if I want to work out just that length, I square root it, and I'm left with the answer of 21.1. And again, I've rounded that centimetres. So that's the way you can work out that one there if the numbers get a bit tricky. Let's say, again, you will need a calculator. I've already done this one before. And if I was to use the other method, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Again, the smaller length there is 11. So 11 squared, substitute the values in. This one, or the other smaller side is x, so x squared. And the longer length was the 23.8. Um, so let's simplify them. 11 squared is 121. We've still got the x squared. The 23.8, when we squared that, I said it was 5644 Again, a little bit of rearranging. Take away 121 from both sides. So x squared leaves you with the 445.44. To get x on its own, we square root both sides. Like so. And then obviously use your calculator to work out the answer. Again, just a reminder, I have rounded this. Obviously read the question. It might tell you to... Um, round it to one decimal place, two decimal places, one significant figure, or whatever. So just make sure you round it to whatever the question asks. Just one little last thing. You might have noticed with this question here, where we have 5, 13, and 12, so all the sides are nice whole numbers. And for my first example here, I'll bring that back on. The first, ex Ooh, that's not that one. My first example here where we had 3, 4, and 5. If all the sides of a right-angled triangle are whole numbers, it's got a posh word, it's called a Pythagorean triple. Just a little bit of extra there for you. Hopefully that was useful. Thank you. OK, so this is a little bit of an extension to the Pythagoras uh, video. So these examples, I'm about to show you, there's four of them in total. Uh, these are 
sort of when Pythagoras is hidden. It's still a Pythagoras question. You'd be expected to know it's a Pythagoras uh, question, but it's slightly trickier to see that. So I've got some of the most sort of standard sort of things that could come up, but hopefully it'll give you a bit of an idea of how you can spot it. Okay, so the first example we've got going on here is you're giving a rectangle and it's after the length of AC, so basically just the diagonal. So when you have something like this, if you can't spot it's a Pythagoras question straight away, the best thing to do is to draw that line that you're after on like so. And in doing that, hopefully you'll spot that what you've actually done is create a right angle triangle here. Now you can obviously solve it from the diagram, but what I always think is a good idea is just to come down in the bit of space that they will give you and just do a very quick rough sketch of this triangle here. So I've got my triangle A, D, C. And of course you don't need to put them on there, but it's just to illustrate the point that that's the triangle that I'm mimicking down here. And of course we have three centimeters and seven centimeters. Okay. And then once you've done that, because it's right angle triangle, we can just do our Pythagoras as normal. So I need to work out the area of this square here for this side, where the length is three, three squared is nine centimeters squared. And I know it's not quite a square, but save space. And then seven squared is 49 centimeters squared. And of course, just like we've been doing in the other examples, when you have the two smaller squares, you add them together. So nine plus 49 uh, will give us 58 centimeters squared. And once you know the area, we can get our calculators and do the square root of 58. So I'll just put that there, the square root of 58 to get the length. And if I press the SD button, we get 7.61577. Um, but I'm just going to round this to one decimal place. So 7.6 centimetres. So I can put that there as well. Make sure your answer is nice and clear to the examiner. You usually have a little bit down here in the exam, which obviously you can put your answer, but I'm just going to put mine there. Okay. Exactly the same thing with this one. Work out the length of x. This one's slightly trickier because it's already told you what the length of x is. It's just, just here. But again, we need to try and spot that it's a Pythagoras question. So if I draw a line straight down there, again, I've made a right angle triangle. So I'm going to mimic that down here to help me solve it. Like so. Okay, so there's my x, but I need to know this length here. Well, the whole length on the shape we've been given is 12. This is 8 at the top here. So if I do 12, take away 8, it'll tell me what this is, and obviously that is 4 centimetres. So 8 plus 4 gives me the 12. So I can now put that on here, so let's put 4 centimetres there. And the height, well, I've just literally split this into a rectangle, so if that's six, this will also be six. Okay, and just as we did before, I won't use it really, I'll just do it freehand. We need to work out the area of this. So four squared is 16 centimeters squared. Very quick sketch there. Six centimeters, so six squared is 36 centimeters squared. And then we need to add them together. So 36 plus 16. Might as well use a calculator, I'm going to use it in a minute anyway. So 16 plus 36 gives us 52 centimeters squared. So the value of x will be the square root of 52, um, which would be seven something. Yep, so it'll round it to one decimal place again, so 7.2. Of course, if the question tells you to round it to a different decimal place or significant figures, obviously do that. But I'll just do it to one decimal place for now. So x equals 7.2 centimetres. Okay. Right, there's the first two. Let's have a look at two slightly tricky ones to that.
Okay, so every now and again, they love to throw this one in here where we have two right angle triangles on top of each other and we need to work out the value of x. So basically, for this example, we're using Pythagoras twice, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is copy out the first triangle here, because I'm gonna work out this length. Once I've worked out that length, I then have these two lengths to work out that length. So this is the first step to work out this length here from the first triangle. So again, I'm just gonna draw, draw a very quick little sketch, nothing fancy. Doesn't even have to look right, it just needs to help with the actual working out. So this length here is seven centimeters, that's 24. And then when I draw my areas, seven squared is 49 centimeters squared. 24 squared, I don't know, so let's use our calculator. 24 squared is 576 centimeters squared. And then we need to add them together, so 49 plus 576. So let's add 49 to that. Gives me 625. So this length here, I need to square root 625, and I believe it's 25, but I will just double check. Yes, it is. 25 centimetres. So this, again, is an example of a Pythagorean triple because all three sides are the same, uh, sorry, are whole numbers. So 7, 24, and 25, it's an example of a Pythagorean triple. So now I've worked out this length here, which is 25 centimetres. I can then work out x by, again, drawing this triangle here. So again, I'm gonna come over here, and just give myself enough space, that should be right if I do it here. Just gonna sketch that second triangle. So the base is 25, it's the one we just worked out. The height is nine, and we're trying to work out what X is. So again, quick little sketch here, nine squared, is 81 centimeters squared. 25 centimeters, if we square that, well we know that's 625, we did that over here. And then all we need to do then is add them together. So 81 plus 625, and I'm gonna use my calculator so I don't make any mistakes, and then I can then use it to square root as well is 706 centimeters squared. So X would be the square root of that. So square root of 706. And if I do the square root of 706 and to one decimal place, you get 26.57. So that seven would round that five up. So 26.6 centimeters. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that up here, 26.6 centimeters. Okay, so it's just using Pythagoras twice. And in this last example here, it's quite hidden because the question actually says, work out the area of the triangle. Okay, so the first thing I would do with this is I'd write down the formula for the area of a triangle, which is base times the height and divide it by two. Well, the base of this triangle is 16, so that's fine, I know that times it by the height, but I don't know the height, so that's what I'm gonna now draw on, is the line for the height. And again, by doing that, hopefully, you've spotted that we've actually made a right angle triangle here, okay? So I'm gonna to need to use Pythagoras to work out the height, so then I can finish off my formula here. So I work out the height, and then obviously then we can divide it by two. So, quick little sketch down here of that triangle. Again, just a sketch, doesn't have to be perfect, it's just to help you with the working like I did over there. And there we go. So this length, the hypotenuse is 17 centimeters. We don't know the height, that's what we're trying to work out. And be careful, this isn't 16, okay? It's eight, because that's an isosceles triangle, probably should have 
those lines there to show that that's an isosceles triangle, in which case this length here is just going to be half of 16, which is 8. Okay, and then we can draw our little squares on here to help us with our working. Okay, so 17 squared to work out the area of this square here is 289 centimetres squared. 8 squared is 64 centimetres squared. Now be careful, this is the hypotenuse. 17 is the bigger side, it's the bigger square because it's opposite the 90 uh, degree angle there. So we need to do 289 take away 64 to find out the area of the smaller square, the other smaller square. So 289 minus 64 is 225 centimetres squared. And then of course we square root that should be 15, yep. So the square root of 225 is 15. So the height is 15 centimetres. Now once you've done that and you've used Pythagoras, don't forget to finish the question because the original question was, what is the area of a triangle? So now you know the height is 15, we can do the base, 16 times the height, which is 15, and divide it by two again. Don't forget to divide it by two when it's area of a triangle. So let's work that out. It should be, I believe, 120, yep. So 120 centimetres squared because it's still the area. Okay, so it's just four extra examples there tagged onto the end of the last video, uh, just showing how Pythagoras can be sort of hidden or used in different contexts. I hope that helps explain a few of those more trickier questions, guys. Thanks for watching.